So welcome to Dodge Ski Boots Chairlift Chats. I'm here with Vitsa Kostelich. It's more like a van chat. Yep, you're right. It is definitely more of a van chat, and it's unfortunate that we're not in the lift right now. Like crushing powder somewhere. Yeah, yeah. But we'll do that later. That's a good idea. So my question for you is, what does it mean to be an Olympian? Well, I guess it's, uh, it's what a lot of people dream of. And uh, I guess, you know, you have to be an Olympian to win an Olympic medal. So if your goal is to win an Olympic medal, that means you have to be an Olympian. Okay. So uh, I guess every sportsman's goal is to win an Olympic medal, is or at least to be an Olympian. Yeah, and at least if that sport has the Olympics. Yeah, well, of course, of course, of course. Um, yeah. All right, I like that. So it's like it's like a step. It's a stepping stone to, to reach the highest level of your sport. Yeah, but if you're not because of any reasons able to win a medal at the Olympics. Just to be here is like a big thing. Absolutely. It's the biggest thing in sports. You know, it's uh, like, I think when this guy said, the guy that established the modern Olympics, he said like, it's important to take part, not to win. Yeah, I think that counts. That really counts. Actually, this is like, what I like is that it's not always about winning, you know? Yeah. And uh, winning would not be possible if you were not taking part <laughs> you know what I'm saying if not everyone was taking part you know then you wouldn't be able to beat anybody <laughs> <laughs> that's very true <laughs> but I do love the spirit of it not being just about the medals yeah you know I think the Olympics are so much about unity yes and it's so nice because today everyone is like picking sides and whatnot, you know, like politics, tearing people apart, whatever, borders, and now you have the Olympics, everybody coming together in peace for like three weeks, living together in the same Olympic village, you know, it's, it's magical, it's magical, it's like a utopia, you know, yeah, no, I'm with you. It's like a utopia. Yeah. We are in a utopia right now. Yeah. Once when you're in the Olympic Village, you're living in a utopia. Yeah. Because everyone, you... everyone's having a good time. Yeah. And everyone's just forgetting about the crap behind the walls. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Have you been into the Olympic Village yet this year? Yeah. Yeah. I've... Nice. I wouldn't miss that. Yeah. Although I'm mostly staying out of the Olympic Village. I, I never actually, I never stayed in the, right in the Olympic Village. Because you always be closer to events. Yeah. yeah. I stayed at the apartments most of the time. But uh, I like to visit, definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. What about you, man? Uh, I've never been in. I, I really want to go. I, I haven't. I, I don't think I have the right credential or whatever. Hey, guys, IOC, get Warner some credentials. Come yes. on. <laughs> Come on. That's true. I did ask for one earlier today, so maybe I'll get one and then we could like swing it to being there. Yeah, that would be pretty fun. But in in the meantime, what what's next for you? What's your next trip? My next trip is um, Iceland. Tell me a little more about that. Uh, it's gonna be a trip all the way across Iceland, 400 kilometers of wilderness, no resupply. No uh, resupply? No resupply this time. Wow. Like no, no, no touching of anything that has to do with civilization. Wow. Just three weeks of, you know, just getting out there and forgetting about everything. And is that what it's about? That's why you like doing this stuff? Yeah, it's more than just that, but that's one of the reasons, Stefan. Okay. Yeah. I like I like how simple life is out there. You know, like you have simple worries and none of them are artificial. And what are some of the worries? There are basic three worries 
once when you're out in the wild. Yeah. What's the weather going to be like? What are you going to eat? And where are you going to sleep? And that's that's pretty elementary, right? Absolutely. But that's something you don't even think about when you're out in the civilized world. It's true. Like, you know, you only chat about the weather when you have nothing to chat about, right? That's so true. And out there in the wilderness, it's like the like most important thing. Yeah. It's actually a good point. I dictates really your life. Like <laughs> I mean, it dictates your life wherever you are, but out yeah. there, it really dictates yeah. your life. That's huh? true. So you basically think about those three things. About, you know, and, and serious things, like what are you going to eat? And where are you going to sleep? This is something you don't worry about once when you're in the civilized so world. So what do you focus on eating? Like, where's your, like... How much food do you bring? What, what do you think about beforehand? You know, food is a is a, it's kind of a science because uh, you're trying to pack as much food as possible in as small weight as possible. Uh huh. So that means a lot of fat, and you know, it's uh out there. It's almost always really cold or extremely cold. So you need uh, a lot of calories. Like uh, in in Greenland last year, we spent about 8,000 calories a day. And that's really hard to replenish. Wow. Yeah. 8,000. And you're trying How to... How do you replenish that yeah. many? I don't... I, I really don't know. Uh, it's... Um, we tried uh, making packs of one and a half kilo for every day, mm -hmm. but we couldn't pack in 8,000 calories. No way. Yeah. So I think this, this year we're going to work more and maybe introduce more fat in those they they into those daily packs okay so it's lighter yeah so it's lighter wow and um give an example of one of the something that you eat like what's it all right meal? The, the daily pack is like uh a lot of cereal in the morning like uh -huh. a bunch of uh cereal mus muesli and uh milk uh, powder milk and then um you mix that all together with warm water it's about 1500 calories for breakfast mm -hmm. and then you start walking and you walk for 10 to 14 hours straight straight yeah like you stop every hour to eat a, like a energy bar or something what? and like drink. a 10 minute break or something yeah yeah something like that and then <laughs> you basically don't don't eat I mean of course there are expeditions that are not goal oriented you know yeah. so you can stop and have a lunch why not? Yeah. But if you want to achieve 35, 40 kilometers a day, then you really need to, you know, keep pushing. Yeah. And absolutely. use all all, the, all day. And then in the evening, uh, you eat a lot of fat. You eat a de dehydrated meal, uh -huh. anything. And uh, and that's about it. Wow. Uh, I don't know. That you know, sounds like a ton of intensity and effort. And you know what? You're always hungry yeah you're super hungry really always. because you always burn more than like yeah, than our packs our packs in greenland were about five thousand calories and uh -huh. that's a lot yeah right yeah absolutely but our our daily you know need was eight thousand so you're just like so you're like hungry through. all the time and uh i think we need our i need to work a lot more on that food you know it's like trying to pick more calories for less weight probably like and try, you know also trying to pick good good calories uh like f in fat the ones that yeah. you're mm -hmm. that are use usable i don't know yeah. a guy once told me i i should like start to to have a keto diet you know like really? ketogen diet that you it like makes you burn fat more efficiently mm -hmm. you basically work on fat so then you could just bring yeah more fat but this is like this is a diet that that uh, a lot of cyclists use today. Okay. Yeah, but I, I don't know. It's that. I really, you know, I've I've been feeding myself on carbohydrates all my life, and you know the sports where I'm coming from, it's mostly carbohydrates. Yeah. So your body is used to it a lot. Absolutely. And yeah, it's, it's a big change. Then. And it's not just about endurance there. I think you know, a lot of it is also about strength. You're always pulling your your body's weight behind in your sled yeah so that's what it is it's about your weight in yeah the sled. so it's it's not your it in in like say normal sports endurance sports there's just gravity of your body yeah but in in polar expeditions there's your body 
and your body weight in the sled that you're pulling. And sometimes you're carrying that as a backpack, right? Well, no, no, you're no. trying, you're, you're definitely trying to avoid that. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. I saw some pictures of you on one of the other yeah. ones where you're Well, playing. if you have a, to cross a river, yeah. then, then you do that. Yeah. It, so what do you weigh? Like 80? Uh, I weigh 88, 88 at the moment. kilos. Yeah. Wow. And that's what the pack is when you're trying to cross a river. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, 88 kilos. I then carry 88 kilos across 88 the river. 88 kilos. Okay, you did. Okay. I made two runs. You made two runs. Yeah. Okay, smart. That, smart. It's smart, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's definitely hard so to get fun. back into that water. It's like two degrees water. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, gosh. Well, great to see you, man. Yeah, you too, man. And thanks for being on Dodge Chair with Jets. It was a pleasure. Awesome. Always a pleasure. Cheerio.